Hey, it's Mikey B, and you are listening to the Heart Healthy Hustle podcast by my friend Jonathan Frederick. Yeah. Mikey B! Yeah, you know it's Mr. B, aka Mikey B. Every time I rap, I feel like I'm turning into a beast. People keep on asking me how I run in all these beats. I don't know, let me think. I just do it, check my feet. If you wanna get it, then you gotta get it out of it to really get ahead of it. You wanna be irrelevant, I'm gripping it or ripping it the way that I've been living it. I wonder what the benefit of trying to get the best of it. Whoa, yo, look at me go. Look at the way that I'm changing my flow. Look at the way that I'm flowing so fluent. You know how I do it, I say and they do it. You ain't doing nothing, and that's what you're losing. I'm working on music, I'm starting to move it. I do it to prove it to all of my students. And if you're committed, I know you can do it. Like, whoa, hold up, what is the rush? Do it for love, not for the fame. Back in the day, they would say, I was lame, but remember my name because I feel the flame. Call me a teacher who killing the game, and I'm doing it better than industry lanes and I'm finding. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Heart Healthy Hustle podcast, where business owners learn to thrive as we strive. On this show, we sit down with industry-leading experts about developing self-awareness, impacting your niche, and striving to live the best life possible. Our mission is to encourage ambitious pursuits in a heart-healthy way through intentional conversation and increasing self-awareness. Why heart-healthy? Because burnout and stress are global epidemics. We're discussing tools that help you to navigate business ownership successfully. So whether you're driving to or from work right now, exercising, eating, or simply relaxing, come hang out and get ready to enjoy another inspiring episode of the Heart Healthy Hustle Show. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another fantastic episode episode of the Heart Healthy Hustle podcast. This isn't going to be inspiring. This is going to be, I don't know how to say it other than fantastic. We're here with my friend Mikey B, Mike Berezny. Nailed it. All right. So he's a fellow New Jersey, born and raised, and I met him in Columbus, Ohio at a, it was actually called the Summit of Greatness with Lewis Howes. And we were in line waiting to meet Dr. Eric Thomas, aka E.T., the hip hop preacher. And man, I just heard a bit about Mike and his story and his vision. And this is an exciting dude. Mike is a teacher, he's an entrepreneur, and a visionary, to keep it simple. He's got a lot of things going on, and he's one of the most passionate individuals I have ever had the privilege of meeting and talking with. So, Mike, welcome to the show. Wow, thank you. What an honor. I appreciate it. Very very kind words, too. Well, I meant every word of it, so I'm excited to get into the interview with you. So, we usually do start out the show with a favorite success quote. So, share with the audience what you got and what it means to you. Something I heard recently... If you dream small, you might as well dream big because it takes just as much work to accomplish those small dreams than it does to accomplish the big ones. So you might as well shoot for the stars and go for it all. Now, I'm, that wasn't verbatim what they said, but that was the message. It made me realize, wow, if I'm going to dream big or if I'm going to dream at all, I might as well dream big because it's going to take just as much work to accomplish that big stuff than it is the little stuff. That's a common trend I've heard amongst many people that have been very successful. So that's something that's always stuck with me. Mike, I want to share a quick story for the listeners out there. So the first time I actually encountered Mikey B was uh, was on Facebook. It was a Gary Vaynerchuk clip. They actually shared this clip of this this dude rapping to Gary V about you know the educational system and all this stuff. And I'm thinking to myself. Gary V is a guy, uh, this guy has balls. Gary V is a guy who takes his time super seriously. But what it did for me was it just showed me the conviction that you have in what you're doing, Mike, and how much you uh, 100% are buying into it and are committed to what you're doing. So I really respect that. I didn't know that it was you in that video until we'd been talking for probably, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And you're like, oh yeah, it was a blah, blah, blah. So with Gary V, and I was like, wait a second. And it kind of connected the dots like in retrospect. Yeah, so go ahead and share uh, with us a brief day in the life. You know, how old are you? Where are you living right now? And what are you currently up to? Sure. And just to jump back real quick to the Gary Vee thing, it was funny because when you did mention that, it's funny just how like I've had a couple of those moments happen where someone would be talking to me. And then after a while, they're like, oh, wait a minute. I've seen you before. It's on the Gary Vee video. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, it kind of builds like an instant connection because. It's that community that Gary does talk about where he has a community of followers and it's not necessarily about striving to, you know, hey, let me talk to Gary. Let me talk to Gary. Mm. But it's the people within the community like me and you, like we have a lot in common. That's where the beauty and the magic is. Like 
if we go to a conference like the Summit of Greatness, yeah, it's all about connecting with the people that are there rather than like, I know we were both in line to see Eric, but which is like super cool. But at the end of the day, it's like you and me are the one that are doing the podcast right now. We're the one that are like, we have a friendship where you talk and stuff and it's not really us and Eric Thomas in that sense. You know what I mean? So really where I was going with that is how that video spread awareness and it has connected me to other people, which is just kind of cool. Like the exposure can build to other relationships. Talk about your, your background and how it brought you to where you are right now. Uh, by the way, sure. just share your age real quick as well. Sure. I'm 28 years old. And like you said before, I'm from New Jersey. And I grew up in a pretty rich community. I wasn't actually super rich myself compared to other areas of New Jersey and other people around the world. Like we definitely had a rich lifestyle. We had food on the, our table. Uh, I had a roof over my head. So I was always grateful for that. Right. But a lot of my friends, you know, they're driving around BMWs and Audis and I would go to hang out at my friend's house. They're living in mansions. And then when I go back to my house, it just wasn't the same. So I always have this balance of knowing that I had it so well, but compared to other people, I didn't have it well. So that developed my mindset to really just give a lot. So even when I was younger, I'd start volunteering. When I was in high school, I did a lot of community service. I used to work at part-time at Matheny, which is a hospital and educational center for disabled kids and adults. And just walking down the hallways and seeing these kids in wheelchairs and they can't even feed themselves, they can't walk. That always stuck with me. It's like, wow, like even though I may at times feel like I don't have it good because my friends have it so much better, at the same time, I was always aware that I have it really good. And that kind of just developed into um, this lifestyle of just kind of like giving back. I don't want to say giving back, but just giving as much as I can. And that's kind of the environment I grew up in, right? So it was just like a rich community. And they told, like my parents and my teachers told me to go down this path of college, which I never really wanted to go down. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And if you want us to get real, I can be really real because I start to talk about this a little bit more now, where when I was about... 12 years old, maybe 11, I actually ran away from home. And really? I, yeah, I wanted to be like Richard Branson because Richard Branson dropped out of high school. He became this huge, successful multimillionaire, billionaire at the time. And I thought to myself, because I always had these entrepreneurship tendencies and I was like, hmm, I could do that. So I ran away from home. I wanted to move to Africa so I could live underneath a coconut tree and start a coconut business and call it the Cocoa Hut. Okay. And, uh, I ended up getting caught by the cops on the highway. They brought me back home. You know, my parents were crying like, what's wrong with you? Ever since that moment, I felt like I had to kind of just listen to my parents when they told me to do something like study hard or do pay attention in school more or stop being a goofball. So I feel kind of like controlled because like I just never want to graduate high school and I never want to go to college because I kind of knew that there's something deeper within me. And I never had a teacher that brought it, it out of me. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I became a teacher. Share with the share with us. You had all these entrepreneurial tendencies. In retrospect, your experience as a teacher uh, has allowed you to be more effective as an entrepreneur. So, in fact, going to school and being educated actually assisted you on your journey. You know, showing you things that you didn't like, some things you did like, and how you can better impact that community. So, share with us how you became a teacher, and then as you were teaching what was sparked inside of you? So the entrepreneurship side of me hasn't really, I kind of put that in a shell and I really started focusing on my teaching career and just becoming the best teacher I can. So I wasn't really teaching my kids too much about entrepreneurship until the past year or so. That's when I started to get into it a little bit more. But the reason why I became a teacher was when I was about 19, 20 years old, like right on the cusp of my birthday, I was babysitting some kids as a part-time job, not knowing what I want to do in college. And I went to school to be a finance major, hated it, didn't want to do it. So during this time, I was transitioning to community college to save money and figure out what I want to do with my life. And I ran into my old high school psychology teacher at the local pool. And she saw me with the kids. I was just playing football with them, hanging out with all these kids, just having a great time. And they all were looking up to me and we ended up talking 
And she was like, you're so good with the kids. Why don't you become a teacher? And in that moment, I realized like, wow, like maybe she's right. I should become a teacher. I never really thought about that. And she was like, yeah, you know, you can inspire kids to live their dreams because you're always talking about these big dreams and these big goals and you would make class fun. So you would just be such a great teacher. You should totally consider it. And I did. And since she was a psychology teacher, I think she had that way of understanding who I was as a person. She was able to deploy some empathy and she was able to just see my strengths of the, as a person and she brought that out in me. And I think I was aware of that too. So I ended up becoming really big into psychology. So during this time of college, when I was starting to take educational classes to become a teacher, I became obsessed with personal development. So I was spending time in Barnes and Noble reading books about relationships, emotional intelligence, psychology, how to be a better teacher, what are the different strategies, all those different things. And it was just like a nonstop journey from that moment. And, hmm. you know, I, once I graduated college, I got a job right away. And I've hopped around from school to school. I've been, I think, around like four different schools. And, you know, there are various reasons why. Like, like when I worked at a charter school, I didn't really like how much work they made you put in. And that may say, sound bad, but it was a lot of unnecessary work. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I wanted to spend more time on being creative and creating awesome, memorable experiences for my child and for those students. And they're just so focused on paperwork and meetings and all this other mm. stuff. And then I ended up going to a different school. I was a Title I teacher. So I was basically one of those in-class support teachers. And I would hop around all the different classes in the school and support the low-performing kids. And... Like, I'm not going to lie, that changed my life because I was able to see all these different teachers. Like, I worked with over 100 teachers, and there's some teachers, like, I hate saying this, but it's just the truth. Like, I remember some teachers calling kids stupid. They're way too old to be still teaching, like, 90 years old with hearing aids. Like, hey, Johnny, will you shut up? You're so stupid. Like, you know, just, like, freaking out on them, making kids cry. Other teachers were super mean. Like, this one teacher, she was younger, but she wouldn't let kids talk. It was the funniest thing, too, because there was this one kid who I worked with because he was in other classes and he was such a class clown. And he's pretty smart, but anytime he talked, she would yell at him and freak out. And he had this face on him that was like <laughs> half serious, half kidding, where he would like look like a ghost, but he was doing it just to make everybody else laugh. And like he ended up pissing her off, but he yeah. wasn't even like, yeah. anything. Yeah. And it's just like, lady, like, come on. He like, he's. He said one word and the moment he opens his mouth, you start yelling at him. So it made me realize that there needs to be like a voice in education to help right. other teachers become a better teacher. And that's kind of the path I'm on now. So and then it's kind of back and forth to between helping teachers grow and then my own personal purpose in life, is, which is to be the voice that I needed as a kid. So I want to inspire kids to live their dreams. So if, if I just had one person plant a seed in my mind as a younger kid and just say, hey, you know what, Mike? You could do this. You could open up that coconut business. You could be a rapper. You could be a YouTuber. You could do X, Y, Z. But no one believed in me. Like my mom and dad, yeah, they supported me in terms of like, okay, you can do it, but it was more you can do it my way, not your way. You know what I mean? And my friends supported me, but not to the point where they're like, yeah, dude, screw college just become a rapper they're like nah dude like that's not smart and my teachers didn't support me so if i had one person really look me in the eyes and get real with me and just say listen you have the potential school may not be your best route mm. but there are things about you that are amazing you got to discover that on your own and teach giving me the right mindset so that's why i'm big on mindset that's why i teach emotional intelligence in my classroom that's why i do my mindset monday lessons so every monday i teach about life the kids, the feedback from the kids, like they love it. A lot of them have said it's changed their lives and it's just because it's real. You know what I mean? Like I'm teaching them real stuff. It's not that I'm special. I'm just one of the few teachers that are willing to go off curriculum and actually teach them about real life. Okay. So I have a few questions there. One is you're, so you're currently, te you're currently doing the podcast Mindset Monday, right? Yeah. What did you teach as a teacher? Okay. I'm a seventh grade math teacher, but I'm qualified to teach elementary and middle school. You mentioned before you never had anybody really believe in you, at least not voice that to you as a younger kid. So are you trying to be that voice then for the next generation? Yeah. 
the podcast helps facilitate that, right? And then for anybody listening who's like, oh, I wonder how I can implement like a podcast into my my current job or, you know, maybe there's a teacher listening. Um, I was actually home over Thanksgiving. I was having a conversation with my parents. They were really curious about podcasting. My mom's a, a guidance counselor for uh, elementary school kids. So, awesome. yeah, and there's actually, they do a podcast with the kids in the school, which is cool. Um, she's not too, I don't think she's a huge part of that, but she was very curious. And my dad was asking questions about, you know, the mainstream of education and will podcasting become probably more of a uh, used tool. And I was thinking, yeah, probably will. I think school systems will probably stay in contracts with, you know, educational companies like McGraw Hill or whatever it may, may be, as opposed to just everyone going on podcasts. I'm curious to hear, as you jumped into this, what was it that caused you to say, I need to take this year and go all in on the entrepreneurship side of things? Yeah. So if you don't mind, can I jump back to the point you're making about education and podcasting? Yeah, please. Cool. Because I truly believe like what you're talking about. I love that. I love how schools are incorporating podcasting more. The school I was working at, they opened up a podcast booth. So kids are able to go in and they're able to record a podcast for like a history project or English project, something along those lines, which is really cool. But when you're talking about using uh, podcasting as a tool, I'm a huge believer in that and not a lot of people are doing that. So using one of my Mindset Monday, the podcast originally was for my students, but a lot of them were listening to it. Basically like 98% of them weren't listening to the podcast because they just didn't like care too much. As a kid, I, they don't even listen to podcasts. Like I did a survey and they're like, yeah, none of us really listen to it. The only ones that listened to it were just like my hardcore fans. Of yeah. the students. And so I was like, all right, this probably isn't the best route because so let me focus on teachers for now. But I do think that kids could be listening to podcasts to learn about, for example, history, or they can learn about even math. Like imagine if there's a, and there are some podcasts out there where you have a math podcast that's giving you like tips and tricks on how yeah. to solve certain problems or just teaching you things. So that, to your point, that is a very powerful tool that isn't being utilized enough. Going back to your next question on how come I took the year off was because I started to do this thing in the classroom called the classroom economy, where all the kids had a job and they got paid a certain salary. And I was trying to teach them how to earn money. And I also want to teach them about entrepreneurship. So there are other ways they can make money. So yeah, some kids may have a job like a banker or a um, like a teacher assistant where you get a certain amount of money and then you had to pay $1,000 for your desk. So that $1,000 was your rent for the desk. And then you may have a job that's like a banker where you get paid $700 a month, meaning you had $300 to make throughout that month by doing extracurricular things in the classroom. And I gave bonuses like, hey, if you get an A plus, you get $100. You get like an A minus, you get 50, et cetera, et cetera. And I also told them to be creative. This is not the only way you can make money. You can make money by doing other stuff. So I had kids make posters for me, like motivational posters that I would put on my wall. And I'm like, whoa, that's an amazing piece of art. Here's $200. I love it. I had kids um, edit videos for my YouTube page. They're like, I want to be a YouTube creator. Do you have any videos I can edit and for your YouTube page? I'm like, yeah. So here's $500 and then I'll give them the $500 and then they would edit a video or like whatever it was. There's so many different examples. And then I started teaching them to make real money where like you can buy and flip stuff on stuff on eBay, things of that nature. Then I had kids even in class show me, hey, Mr. B, look, I just bought something on eBay, literally just flipped it and made like $40. I didn't even, I didn't have to do anything like that was so easy. I'm going to be rich. <laughs> And I was like, well, that's so cool, dude. Or like other girls, um, they would make jewelry. They would come into class and sell it. And then this one girl made like $100 by selling her handmade jewelry. And it was just like really cool. And I had this one kid who he used to ask me for money every now and then. It's like, hey, Mr. B, do you have like $3 for lunch or something? So like, dude, here's $10. I'm going to teach you how to fish. So buy a bunch of candy and flip it. So over the weekend, he bought candy, he flipped it and made like, I think 10 or $20. I can't remember. I think it was $20 profit. So you're talking about real cash in all of these scenarios, right? Yeah. So those scenarios, that was real cash. The classroom economy was fake money. 
but I was telling them, hey, use that mindset to make real money off of it. Okay. Then kids were starting to make real money in school. I decided to take the year off because I realized I'm teaching these kids how to make money and it's working, but I've never really done it myself to the degree that I probably could. Like, I really want to start a business. I've never done it. I'm young, 28, and let me just take off a year. Let me build a business. Let's see what I can do. And if I can make a lot of money off of that, I'm just going to use that money to put back into my classroom, give away scholarships, like um, eventually maybe even build my own school if I can sell a business for like a million dollars, which would be crazy, but you know, you never know. So that was kind of the mindset for me of taking time off from teaching to build a business. And then next year when I go back into the classroom, I have real hardcore evidence of things that work and that don't work. So talk to us about taking these, this year off and what you're doing currently, what's your business, what you're building. I'm curious because you said multiple times there a year and then you're planning to go back. So you have a plan, you have mm-hmm. you know, a certain amount of time, you're not quitting teaching whatsoever. This is really just to support the dream long term. So talk to us about what you're currently doing. What What's the company you're working on? Yeah, so it's called Poochie Butter. It's a peanut butter for dogs, so it's all natural, no preservatives. And then we added in supplements uh, for a nutritional boost, such as turmeric, parsley, ginger, coconut oil, and cinnamon. So there's a bunch of health benefits for that. It really started with my friend, Henry. He was the one that created the idea, and he brought this idea to me. I wasn't really on board to jump on right away just because I was teaching, and this was months and months ago. Yeah. And it was before the summer. But I was like, dude, I'll support you if you need help. So he's like, okay, great. And then he did this his first event and where it was like a dog show. So he was just building brand awareness. He didn't even have a product yet. It was all like uh, just free samples. And I went there to film for him. And I was like, dude, this is actually legit. It's really cool. And a lot of people really like the product. So, you know, I, I would love to help out like more on a regular basis. And then he presented this idea of me joining and taking equity in the company and really becoming like a partner, like a full-time partner. And I was like, you know what? I'm on board. Let me do it. So now I'm co-owner of it and we're just building this together. And it's the self-awareness of we've been friends for a very long time, ever since elementary school. And he has his own business. He has a multimedia digital marketing company. So he's been in that field for a while and he has a lot of the technical skills that I necessarily don't have, but I have more of the creative side, you know, with social media growth or building a community or just creating content to advertise and just things along those lines. So we mesh really well. We build off each other's strengths and weaknesses and it's a good partnership. So our goal together really is to, um, hopefully within a year, get it to a point where we get enough sales where we can pitch our company to an, like Chewy.com and just sell it outright and just sell the company and then just take money from that and then use that money to just help others. So he wants to mentor other entrepreneurs and he wants to invest in young startups and kids that want to build businesses. He wants oh, to love it. Them. And I actually kind of want to partly do that as well, like use some of that money to invest in other kids, which would be like my scholarship fund, and then use some of the other money to help build a school, whether whether that's like hiring people or whatever it may be. So yeah, um, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're really just trying to push our product out there. And we have a uh, sprinkle too, so it's not just a peanut butter. It's also like dry food enhancer. So a lot of dogs, they don't eat their – dry food right away. You have to put chicken or put other things on top. So this is another alternative and it's a healthy solution. And yeah, that's kind of the, the mission. We also donate 10% of our profits to local New Jersey animal shelters. And we're big believers on just giving away and like giving back. So we try to donate some of our product to local animal shelters too, like giving away free peanut butter. And we're trying to get involved with other charities and just to help out as much as we can, because that's like a core value that we both believe in. So, yeah. Wow, that's powerful, man. So now that you've taken the year off, um, not really off, you're just kind of transitioned into a new area. How do you avoid burnout? You know, I know you talk about that on your podcast for teachers, things like that. What are some ways that you avoid burnout? One may sound kind of cliche or lame, but... 
it's just so true where I'm just so grateful and I really have wired my brain to think that way, like constantly, no matter what, because like I said earlier, I used to work at a hospital with uh, disabled kids and adults and I still go back there. Like I'm even planning on going tonight, like after the podcast, I plan on going to hang out with my friend there and uh, she's in a wheelchair and she changed my life. Like when she talks to me about how hard her life is and she, she can't walk, she wants a boyfriend so bad. She's like 38 years old now. She's never had a boyfriend and well, she has had a boyfriend, but not the way that you or I would have a relationship. You know what I mean? It's not the same. And she just wants love. She can't find love. She just wants to have a job. She can't have a job. Like she can't like her life. No offense. Like she knows that it kind of sucks. And that's why I go there to just like bring joy to her life. And something that I tell her a lot too, because she'll tell me how like she just wants to die. She wants to kill herself. And I'll tell her it's like, listen, like I need you. Like you help me become a better person. You help me like live a better life. You help me do as much as I can to bring joy to other people's lives. Like I need you. And that like changed her life. Like she will, like we're pretty much best friends in a way. Like we really are. And she will tell me like how like I've made such an impact on her life. And when she does beat herself up emotionally that, you know, she will think of me and I give her hope and I give her positivity and she has a mental disorder. So for her to kind of like overcome that stuff where she can't really control the negative thoughts, but when she, she'll start thinking about me, which will inspire her in ways to just be more positive and even for her to be grateful. She'll be like, you know what? I'm grateful that I can at least see and hear because some people at the same school, they can't even hear. They're, they're deaf and blind. Yeah. Like, so just having that mindset of always being grateful, it allows me to just live life to the fullest. And I'm, I just appreciate everything mm-hmm. I do have. So if I ever do feel burnt out, I remind myself, you know what? I have an opportunity to live a great life that not other people have that opportunity. They don't have the opportunity to live a life like that. So that kind of just like fires me up and motivates me. And it just gives me that energy to always stay on top of my game. One of the things about staying grateful has a lot to do with perspective, living in a state of gratitude as much as possible. Uh, and I'm not saying this to, if you just went through a family member loss or something really tragic, I'm not, I'm not saying this directly to you. Just in general, you mm-hmm. know, when things are just the ebb and flow of life, I think it helps a lot realize that you can celebrate your wins. You can celebrate the lessons you learn when you don't win. And, um, you know, just be honest with yourself about the thoughts that you're having. A lot of us will have thoughts that aren't serving us. And it's usually around things that you can't control. So what helps me a ton, I actually learned this from somebody, I forget who it was. Oh, I think it was a guy, previous guest I had, Adam Lamb. He was talking about living proactively instead of reactively. Let go of what you can't control and what you can control live proactively about. If you are not obsessed or attached to what you can't control, then it makes life quite a bit easier because you realize even if it goes great or if it goes terribly, you couldn't have changed it. And so by living proactively, you're still going to have challenges. It's still going to be hard, but you kind of choose what hard you want to go, if that makes sense. And that's largely what entrepreneurship I found is, hey, you know, it's, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard not being, you know, doing what you want, pursuing what you believe is right. And it's also hard pursuing that. And it's like, which hard do you want to choose? There is no easy way out. So I want to jump into the school, Mike. Um, you, you talked about this with me in Ohio. And you even stood up in front of over a thousand people asking if, um, you know, some famous entrepreneurs would be willing to help start a fund for this school. So share with share with us your vision about what, what this school would mean to kids and why you want to build something like this and why you plan to in the future. Yeah. So my the vision is to create a school that teaches the curriculum is 50 percent about emotional intelligence and the other 50 percent is academics. So focusing on the emotional intelligence side first, teaching about like the pillars of emotional intelligence, like self-awareness, motivation, empathy, social skills, uh, holding yourself accountable, things of that nature, and then even going deeper into that content. For example, burnout. How do you deal with burnout? How do you deal with stress? How do you manage your time? How do you build mental habits? We always talk about like, hey, wake up at 4.30 a.m. and do X, Y, Z in order to have a productive day. But what kind of mindset habits are we thinking on a regular basis? How have we we rewired our brain 
to think the same way every single day like we do going to the gym or we do like making that cup of coffee, whatever it may be. Yeah. So focusing on the emotional side of edu- like strengthening our mind, that's something I'm really big on. So and, let me interject. Are you planning to integrate that into like curriculum or into a Pledge of Allegiance followed by, you know, a quick like, hey, guys, here's the motivational word for the day. It's stuff like that. Like, how are you plan? How are you thinking on this? Yeah, like actual curriculum. So there would be legit classes. Okay. As well as, um, and this is where it gets a little complex because there is so much to learn about it where I am actively seeking out someone that is a professional in curriculum development, someone that knows how to structure this better. Like I have an outline, like I have all the key things I want to talk about. And like I've been working on my own curriculum, but having someone that's a professional that can kind of tweak yeah. it and master it, that's where the stage I'm at with that. Would this be a private school or charter school? What would the school be at first, you know, while you're you're getting it off the ground? What would it would it look like a charter what would it be called, in other words? Yeah, it would be a charter school technically. Basically, it is a public school. And there are a couple approaches that you can tackle this. One is having like a waiting list and you interview kids and those kids would then you would pick a kid. So let's say it's a hundred kids that got interviewed. Well, that's very low. So let's just say like 500. Then you would pick 250 out of the 500 um, based on certain criteria, whether they meet the vision, whether they're really motivated to buy into that school and that philosophy, uh, financial situations play a role in it as well. So there's a lot of different variables that go into that. But yeah, it would be a charter school. It would be open to anybody, and then it would probably be just more of like an interview situation. And uh, there's like a whole curriculum based off how you would enter that as well. Mm-hmm. And, what would the goal be for 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 the school? What would the what, what would your vision be? The vision would be to in really just to improve on self mastery and to really emphasize lifelong learning. Now, a lot of schools may say stuff like that. They all these schools have their own mission statement. And they never really like live by it because like one of the schools I worked at, they're like, they had lifelong learning in their mission statement, but the teachers themselves aren't lifelong learners. Like I've had teachers put growth mindset all over the bulletin board, yet they don't teach their kids about growth mindset. They're hypocrites. Why why do you want that in the curriculum at this school? Why would you want that? You know, why, why, in other words, why do you want, why do you want, the kids to improve self, you know, get to a level of, you know, working on self mastery and managing oneself. Why is that so important to you? Yeah, because one, I believe that life is all about growth. And so many times, and I was guilty of this at one point in my life too, where you kind of just stop growing and learning. So when I graduated high school and like my first year in college, I wasn't really growing that much. I wasn't seeking out personal growth. I wasn't curious about learning for like that one year. There's that one transition year where I kind of just felt unmotivated. But in terms of life, like I know so many people in life that just kind of settled and I'm not here to judge them in any way at all, but they complain about their relationships and how it's not going well. Like, oh, my wife is annoying or my girlfriend's annoying or my boyfriend doesn't blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's because they stop learning. Like they stop working on themselves. You know what I mean? And they start making excuses. So for me, it's really planting that seed in their mind to never stop learning, to never stop growing, to always be curious. And when that, when they have that kind of mindset, they can blossom into anything. So it's also about keeping, there's so many things that would go into the vision where it's also about keeping mental, their mental health healthy. So it's really just about having a healthy mind. Like, do you have good relationships? Um, are you emotionally stable? Like, do you know how to control your emotions? Do you know how to be mature in certain situations? Um, are you working out? Are you exercising? Are you meditating? Things of that nature. So there's so many things, so many different variables where the ultimate goal is just to continue to educate these kids on the mental side. And then there is the other half, which is academics, where it would be an updated curriculum as well. So, for example, let's say there are a lot of problems in the world right now. For example, the ozone. Now, I don't have a ton of knowledge on this because I haven't completely looked into the science behind all of it. Elon Musk even talked about this, saying how, let's say, for example, right now, currently, every single car in the entire world 
every car manufacturer stopped producing uh, gasoline vehicles and we just went all electric, it would still take 96 years. Yeah. Did you hear about this? Yeah. And, and the yeah. fact of the matter is it's still not going to matter. It's not going to happen. There's still, you know, now what is it? 95, 98% of car production is gas, you know, machines. Yeah. So it's interesting, right? I, it's funny. I'm, I'm going to tie in something here. I was yeah. watching a quick, uh, I don't know. It was like a short video about this startup. That was, this guy was like an entrepreneurial type guy. And he started up this parking lot fueling business where he drives around parking lots. Uh, you know, he's contracted to companies like Facebook, Google. So while employees are working in the building, they can reduce emissions by cutting out the trip to the gas station by signing up for, yeah, fill up my tank while I'm at work here. So they drive around in their truck, fill up people's tanks who have signed up for the service. Payment for the fuel, they keep very low. Not that that matters, but the point is they're not yeah. just upcharging the cost of the fuel. They're actually selling it at equal or lower value to standard gas stations or in the area. What's fascinating about that is he accepted the fact that, hey, um, there is nothing that is going to really change the entire population of the world from using their gas car. It's just the infrastructure we live in. So here's something we can do that in, it helps people to drive their gas car, but the, the weird thing is it also reduces emissions by cutting out that trip to the gas station. So he is helping the problem in that yeah. sense. So it's just really interesting how entrepreneurship and having that mindset of, hey, what can I do? That proactivity that can change change the game. Absolutely. Dude, you, you nailed it. I love that. That's exactly what I was trying to explain. You said it so well, where it's just teaching that kind of mindset to have kids think like that so they can solve and make a small impact or a large impact or a medium impact by doing things of that nature, by solving those kinds of problems and just really emphasizing that more. Because like I said, I've worked in various schools and they know like a lot of teachers, they don't talk about that stuff. So normally a lot of entrepreneurs, they kind of figure that on or they figure that out through self exploration or self education right. or whatever it may be. Here, here's my thing, Mike, and you're, you're the guy that has the teaching experience, right? So I'm not knocking the, the teachers at all. I don't have the experience as a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I've, I've had few, uh, I've had a few uh, loved ones who are uh, in the field. And like I mentioned, my mom's a guidance counselor. Um, I was with somebody in a relationship who is a uh, school teacher of elementary school. And I, I have friends as well in the field. I never attack teachers and I know you're not attacking them. I'm just saying I personally understand the frustration there with like some teachers aren't good. In my opinion, teachers aren't paid enough. Like I shared this with you when we were talking in person. I was like, they're not yeah. appreciated enough. They're not paid enough. And there's no excuse to not do your best in whatever field you're in. But what I am saying, I don't think teachers are the the quote unquote issue. I think it's the whole system that could use a revamp. And again, it's 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 mm -hmm. an approach of proactivity as opposed to judgmental or oh that you 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 stink at this. Let's you know it's not that. It's more it's more approach of all right. Like how can we work to actually help the kids? We all have the same mission. We all have the same goal here. Let's work together and build something that actually lifts the kids up and allows them to thrive in society as opposed to just get trained for a factory type of job where they sit in one position and do the same task all day long and become very mundane for anyone who's in a field where maybe you're leading younger people or maybe you are a actual school teacher, a counselor, anything like that. What is the main thing that you have noticed, Mike, that helps to encourage these individuals? Yeah. So once again, adding on to what you said, because you made such a strong point, and I have been called out on this before, so I just want to clarify just to like say my own behind. But um, I'm definitely not ripping on teachers in a sense because I know there's so many amazing teachers out there. And a lot of times it is just like the DNA of the school system. But my thing also is to motivate other teachers. Like, listen, I, I do what I want in the classroom in a sense. Like you can tell me, like my principal can tell me, hey, teach this, do this. And, you know, I'll follow those standards. But at the same time, I can make time to do Mindset Monday every week. I can make time to teach kids about life. And the, when I start doing that, no one's controlling me. Like the my boss isn't in the classroom at, like, at all. They come into my classroom like three times a year. So you know what I mean? So yeah. teachers are like, sometimes afraid, like, oh, I can't do it. It's like they're not even like watching you really. Like if you wanted to like spend yeah. 20 minutes a week to talk about 
like stress management or something, which will improve, which has been proven to increase student engagement, to increase their grades and all that other stuff. Like if you want them to do better in school, teach emotional intelligence. So when I knock on teachers, it's not necessarily me like putting them down. It's like you have more power than you think. So right. really it's like teach the way that like do what you want in a sense, and obviously within the guidelines. Sure. And for the betterment of the students, right? <laughs> yep. That's a that's a huge thing. I think the emotional intelligence there is key because it's you're so driven and so focused on the end goal that the way you say it almost sounds like you're knocking teachers, but in reality you're just saying, Don't you see it? Like the goal is to lift these kids up. I was a teacher, I am a teacher, and you know, so I get where you're coming in your approach with that. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to say, because your last question, I, I guess it kind of ties into that where, like, what advice you can give to other teachers or leaders. And it's really just understanding, like, you have a voice, you have more power than you think, mm. and you have more of an impact and an influence than you think. So it's really just having the confidence to believe in yourself that you can make a difference and to just take personal growth more serious. You know, it doesn't sometimes... You know, people knock on personal growth as a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be better because, you know, if you want to help others grow, you got to grow yourself. So lead by example. Yeah. And then that can help you to be in a place where you're equipped to serve your community, serve the students. If you're a teacher, serve your staff, uh, whatever the case may be. Cool, man. So I'm really getting into the flow of this interview here. All right, Mike. So getting a little bit more focused on you as a person um, okay. in your daily life. Share with us some something that people don't know about you that is a perhaps weekly, monthly, or even annual occurrence for you that you feel like uh, people don't know about you because it's personal and that you don't usually just tell people. I would probably say, I guess this is kind of well-documented and well-known, but I do like to rap and I don't want to say I'm a rapper, but I mean, there's no other way to put it. So I'll just say I'm a rapper. I figured out where two things. One, writing music is almost like a form of therapy for me. So if I really just want to get my emotions out, that is one way I do it where I'm able to kind of just reflect on how I'm feeling and I can get stuff out. Like I just finished this song, which is actually a diss song because I have some close friends that kind of talk about me behind my back. And it's kind of disappointing that they're supposed to be some of my best buddies, yet they make fun of my Mindset Monday videos or they're talking trash. And it was like, if you're in my homie, why are you doing that? So my way of dealing with that is just writing music. And that's why I just wrote a diss track. <laughs> so for me, my big point of emphasis here is you can still be very productive in your every day to day life by finding a hobby that allows you to be productive. So for example, I can make an impact by writing music that's not just necessarily a diss song, but that's also motivational where I tell a story, whatever it may be. Uh, I'm also being productive by actually writing content and doing that stuff. So when people are like, oh, you need to take a break, you're gonna burn out, you need time to relax. No, like me working on music is relaxing. That's the hack I figured out. So for example, if you love sports, you don't need to take a vacation by like laying on the beach. You can be, you can join another basketball league. You can join four basketball leagues if you wanted to and play Monday through Thursday or whatever it is. So if you really are passionate about a hobby, finding time to go even further into that, it, it is almost like a meditative state because you're in the zone, you're in the flow, you do what you love. And you're also being productive because no matter what it is, whether you're cooking, then you're improving your cooking skills. If you're playing sports, you're improving improving your health. If you're writing music, you're getting, yeah. you know what I mean? So that is like the one big thing where if you were to say like, what's one thing people don't really know about me? It's I'm constantly working. And when I say that, it's not always like grind, hustle, 24 no, seven. No. It's also like, even when I'm taking a break, I'm being productive because I'm doing stuff I love. Right, it comes down to progress and hobbies. And I think hobbies are a really good I wouldn't say hack, but a great way to build momentum in your life. Because if you do something for yourself it, as like, let's say a hobby, it is, for me, I bought a drone back in 2016. I've had one ever since. And I started a little digital media marketing company and, you know, did a few jobs, do a few barter jobs, which is a really cool thing. 
um, mm-hmm. in today's new era economy. But it's very therapeutic when I just go out and fly because you're completely engrossed in the hobby. You you got to focus on the drone. Where is it in the air? You got to steer it, control it. And then if you get good enough, you can start to control it for the camera aspect of it and get really pretty shots on video. So you're totally engrossed in it. And it almost feels like a time waste if you're not working for money or whatever, which I honestly, I hardly ever fly it anymore. I'm just doing other things, but it's yeah. a great way. It, it just helps you to feel happier. And I think progress is a big thing in terms of happiness. I personally, you know, cause I shared with you about my faith a little bit, like where my joy comes from, I believe is largely due to that. And in fact, happiness being the fact that it's uh, ephemeral, it's just short lived is coming from progress. And I think it, happiness, you know, comes and goes. And I don't think it's healthy to try to be happy all the time. I think there's ups and downs, but like you said, people may say something to you where they're like, Oh, why don't you just take it? take some time off and you're thinking to yourself why i'm not tired like i love what i'm doing and it, and it's making an impact and 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 you know once you do the self aware the once you do enough personal development and you, you do enough of that stuff working on self awareness and consistently doing that you get to a point where your confidence is there and you're able to just operate from that and it's a lot more impactful and your influence increases would you agree yeah 100% I want to ask you, Mike, without further ado, Mikey B, would you throw us a quick riff from your motivational rap? Ooh, okay. Man, totally unprepared for this. I put out this song recently. It's like four minutes long, so I won't do the whole thing, but I'll try to do like a mini segment of it. Should I just go in, start rapping? Yeah, man. All right, here we go. So this is like halfway through the song, so there's like a beginning part and... This is like the middle part, so yeah. it makes this sound weird at first, but I'm going to go for it. So get on my level, I'm waking up early, like four in the morning, I got to get going because I'm in a hurry. My time is like money, I just can't afford it to plan all my lessons, I can't make them boring. I want all my kids to have fun with the learning, a few more deserving of the money that I'm earning when I got to get up early, but I stay up late to grind. Yeah. Do you realize I'm just a guy? Stick to the vision I had in my mind. Do what I want and hope what a surprise. You put in the time, you watch it arrive, like in Mazan, I'm on my prime. Don't be mistaken, I still haven't made it, but no, I'm not taking my eyes on the prize. Yeah. Yeah. I know I won't blow if I don't try to find the time to write. So I won't lie. I try at night, but still I can't find time. And I got Mike inside my mind to fight, but I just might put my whole pride aside so I can kill this mic. Everybody, let's go nuts. Everybody, please stand up. Everybody, bounce and jump. I think it's time we turn up. Everybody, let's go dumb and go hard like coconuts. Hold on, hold on. Listen up and repeat after me. I promise to live my dreams. Boom. I don't care what people think. I can achieve anything. That's the lesson that I teach to my lesson so they see what their potential could be. I live everything I preach. I gave up too easily. So please take some notes from me. Now I got the right mindset where every day I live the dreams. Yeah. Live your dreams. Uh, back on the scene. Like you be, be that mean MC. I mean what I mean when I feel like a fiend. Yeah, tell me who you want to be. Working on a better me. Flowing like a killer beat. Like, oh, no, here we go with the flow. No joke. I'm dope. No smoke. I'm a blow like a volcano. Yeah, it's been a minute, but I got to get a minute. Could you be feeling skilled? Everybody know I kill it. Yeah, tell me who that is. I'll be rapping independent, but I'm feeling like I'm winning. I'm living my vision. Like, whoo, yeah. Building my brand. Building my business. Yeah, that is the plan. But if I want to do something like start my own school, then I got to start making some bands. Yeah. All right, that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. All right. That that song right there, it was it was created to be performed live. So in yeah, like the middle part that where there's like a mini break. That's where the audience would repeat after what I said. Right. And um, I performed this live, and the whole crowd went nuts. And I actually it was a rap contest, and I actually won the contest, which was crazy. Like that song that's right there sick. won a contest. It's like a cool beat in the background too. So it was a. Uh, it's a tough one to perform because you rap really fast at times, so sometimes mm. it's hard to like pronunciate everything well. But yeah, do you have? How was it? You went to this. What was it called? This gala, and Gerard Adams was there. You said you met G- Gerard. Are you planning to visit his school? Did you get a chance up in Newark? He's doing something. Leaders create leaders. Yeah, um, I did get a chance to talk to him. I said he said shoot him an email, and I think I did. I haven't heard back from him, but I have a weird feeling I might not have reached back out to him. I know I sent him a DM on Instagram. I'm not 100% sure if I sent him an email. I think I did, but yeah, he never responded, never got anything back. So I guess I should follow up, but I didn't know that I'm actually friends with his sister, Monica, and I was just talking to her at the event, and then I saw she was talking to him, and I'm like, oh, now it makes sense. Your brother and sister, wow, but yeah. And that was in New York. Was that for Pencils of Promise? 
No, that was for it was for STEM technology. It was for a charity. They do a lot for STEM education, so that's really what it was for there. Uh, I did go to a Pencils of Promise gala event, and that was really cool. Uh, they raised three million dollars that night. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, if you get plugged in with Gerard, I think that would be a great, great thing. Jumping into the Heart Healthy Hustle Round, Mike, I want to ask you a series of rapid-fire questions around the title. Are you ready? Yeah. What activity do you like to use to care for and strengthen your internal character? Uh, meditation really helps build that self-awareness, and I feel like I can get in touch with myself and my soul and my heart by meditating. So that's one thing I like to do. But how do you maintain your physical health? and avoid burnout? Just working out every day, no matter what it is, doing some sort of workout. Currently, I'm on the DL because I just got shoulder surgery, and I can definitely feel the effects of not being able to work out on a consistent basis. So, you know, staying healthy just by, even if it's walking your dog, going for a jog, doing push-ups, sit-ups on your off day, whatever it is, always do something to stay active. Healthy mind, a healthy body, healthy soul, they're all connected. Working out on a regular basis is so important. I don't think people stress this enough. Even for me, I work out like people just, oh, you're healthy, you're a slim guy. Well, if I'm not working out every day, I definitely, I notice a negative effect on my mindset, on my health. So exercise, even if you're off day from the gym, is a walk for 30 minutes. That's very good exercise. It's amazing exercise. Coincidentally, it's one of the top exercises referred to on my show. People say walking. Walking? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very underrated. And real quick, um, walking, I don't know if anyone has a dog out there, but walking my dog, that's where I get all the creative ideas. I actually write lyrics, a lot of rap lyrics while I'm walking my dog on my phone. So it's just a, it's a great experience walking. And a hack for you guys listening, take a, and I'm sure, Mike, you have a way to record these. Um, if I don't suggest using your phone unless that's all you have on you. Uh, but if you're at your job, especially, and you're not supposed to be on your phone, let's say, I, w- I used to take post-it notes, and I would write something on there if an idea hit me throughout the day. I mean, I was filling my pockets almost every day at this time in my life. And so currently, I've upgraded to a 99-cent memo book from Walmart, and this <laughs> thing is fully packed out with a spiral metal spiral and uh, flippable lined notebook pages, and it's very short, just fits right in the side of your pocket. You can take that out, write out an idea for a business, write out an idea for your whatever you're working on. It's a great way to remember those ideas that strike because those don't always last, those intuitive moments. Oh, man, what a great idea. And if I don't write it down, I typically forget about it for, if not forever, for quite some time. 100%. Great, man. So hustle. What's your main motivation for doing what you do, Mike? You have, you're a busy guy. I wouldn't say you have a chaotic life. You just have a lot going on and your personality are very driven. So why is that? What What is it that you are so motivated? What's getting you out of bed in the morning? To be that voice that I needed as a kid growing up, it's to inspire kids to live their dreams. I wake up, even though right now I'm not in the classroom, that's still in the back of my mind. That's still what I think about every day. Like what I'm doing right now, ultimately long-term is for my students. So I just want to inspire them. I just want to be that voice. And I just want to be that, I guess you can say, it's not bragging at all, but I want to be like a hero to kids. You know what I mean? Because I know when I was a kid, I wish I had someone I could look up to and kind of like model after. So I just want to be that person for them. And I just want to do it for them. And that's what drives me to just hustle every day. Hmm. What was it like not having that voice when you needed it? Um... It was kind of sad, honestly. Like, I remember I I had a lot of dreams. I remember one of them was to be a baseball player, and my coach kind of just, you know, he kind of pooped on me. He said I would never make it. I wasn't good enough. I was too much of a class clown. I remember I walked into his office to ask him why I wasn't getting enough playing time, and he said he can't trust me. He's like, you're always getting trouble in school. By the way, I was a horrible student, and I was getting trouble. And he was like, you're always getting trouble in school. How can I trust you on the field? How can I trust you'll perform well? If I need you to do something, how I, I can't trust you. So you want to play me. And I used to get private hitting lessons. And I was very open about that with him. I was like, listen, I'm getting private hitting lessons from a coach that is coaching kids that play at CN Hall Prep University. And they just won the state championship. And I'm doing just as good as those guys in the lessons. 
So like I'm playing baseball with kids that are playing at CN Hall prep. And my hitting coach is like, dude, you're just as good as these kids that are playing at private school and your coach isn't playing you. And like, he ended up calling my coach. It pissed off my coach because it like questioned his authority. And he ended up like finally caving a little bit because my senior year in high school, I started taking things a little bit more serious. And he ended up playing me. I ended up like doing really well. I started getting hits. And then I ended up playing in college. I played for one year in college. I walked on just to prove I can do it. I ended up like being top 15 in the nation for all like community college because I played at community college. I was top 15 in the nation in batting average because I was such a good hitter. And like, I was like, dang, like if he just believed in me, like back in the day, like I was beating myself up emotionally. I was like, man, like this sucks. Like I have these big dreams. I'll just never make it. So it was sad, honestly. But once I overcame that, it was, uh, that's what fuels me too. It's the chip on my shoulder. Hmm. That's powerful. Yeah. Do you have three most influential books that you can share? Yeah. So one is High Performance Habits by Brenda Burchard. I actually just did a podcast this morning about his planner that he just came out with. I'm, I'm so pumped about his planner because it's everything I was looking for. I mean, I've had planners before where it organizes your day, like schedules, tasks, goals, gratitude, little quotes, things of that nature. But this is a mindset journal. It helps keep track of your mindset. It has a scorecard on how you're actually applying your daily habits. And once again, it's not like physical habits of like waking up at a certain time. It's the mental habits that you're doing. Are you taking care of yourself physically on a scale of one to five? And they have subcategories and it's just super powerful. So the book itself, he talks about six things, which is clarity, necessity, um, energy, uh, influence. I'm blanking. And he no talked about two other ones. But what, what about the other two books? I guess Gary Vee's crushing it. I would say that's inspirational just because even though he puts out so much content, after reading his book, it just made me like not want to consume his content. So I really don't listen to him that much anymore yeah. just because I'm in a process of always wanting to create. So I don't consume that much content. I'm always in like creation mode. And although like when I want to learn, I like I'll research stuff, but that book was influential. And a third book I'd probably say was Think Like Einstein, which was a book that kind of just was teaching about how to think critically. And that was very powerful for me as a math teacher, where I was able to teach my kids to problem solve on a different level. It gave me a lot of strategies. It wasn't even a teacher book, but it allowed me to become a better teacher, where I was able to really help kids get better at math. Uh, so that was just a really powerful book in terms of becoming a better educator. Hmm. Yeah, those are the three top ones I have. Great. So in conclusion of the show, I'd like to wrap it up with a question called the Park Bench Paradigm. So if you could walk through a local park present day and you saw your younger self, if you could go up to yourself, sit on the bench, put your hand on your own shoulder, what would you tell your younger self and why? I'll tell my younger self to trust my gut feeling. Trust that intuition. Trust your heart. I was like, kid, listen. Ignore all those outside voices. People are going to tell you how to live your life. They're going to tell you what to do. You have to have the confidence to believe in yourself that that feeling you have inside of your body right now, follow it. Because if you don't, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. And you know what? You might fail. You might lose. You might get made fun of along the way. But you got to be mentally tough and you got to trust that in the end, it's all going to work out. And if you just keep following your heart and you believe in yourself, it will all work out. And that's pretty much what I would say to my younger self. That reminded me of Mike was a uh, past guest, Brandon Lewis, episode seven, I believe, said he said something to the effect. You can take advice from other people, but understand that that advice, even if it's coming from a, a, a good place, well-meaning place you're the only one that will deal with you know directly the consequences of taking that advice mm. for example a teacher can give advice to you as a young student or a mentor can give you advice but you're going to be the one that deals with the consequences of following through on that advice so that really helps one in my opinion help me to take ownership of what i'm going to actually act on and what i'm going to actually allow into my mind um, to influence me and it, it's very empowering as well 
Dude, yeah, that is powerful, and that's very true. I like that. Mikey B, how can people connect with... Oh, you know what? Before we do that, what's one thing you want to leave with the audience? You know, my audience is filled with proactive young professionals. These are people working jobs. These are people, a lot of them are commuting to work, to and from, listening to the show, um, tuning in, you know, week after week, hearing from the guests, hearing from you today, Mike. And so, what? Are, what's... You know, we also got entrepreneurs listening. We got business owners. You know, everybody out there is just doing their thing and trying to live proactively, live to the full, live to their full potential and live wide open. So... That's a motto I have for this show is live wide open. So what's something you would leave with these individuals listening uh, before we go on today's episode? Awesome. Love it. So I'm going to leave all of you with one practical tip, like a real strategy you can implement. And I've been using this recently and it's been working wonders for me. It's so basic and so simple. But if you can do this, I guarantee, you know, it'll be life changing. And what that is, it's the five minute method. So no matter what it is that you want to accomplish, if you apply this five minute method, it will have long term effects because I believe in the power of habit. For example, everyone's always like, I want to write a book one day, yet they never, they procrastinate, they never write the book. You can apply this five minute method. Every single day, you can make five minutes out of your day. You can take five minutes out of your time. Set your timer for five minutes and start writing. So when you start writing and when that timer hits five minutes, you have a choice. You either stop or you continue going and you set no time limit after that and you just stop whenever you want to stop. Now, the reason why this is so powerful is because during that first five minutes, just write and just keep doing whatever it is. And for example, it doesn't have to be writing. It could be something like working out, like, hey, I want to work out, set a timer for five minutes. So, but going back to the writing, when you do that every single day, you are building a habit in your mind where you are constantly writing every single day. Even if you decided to stop after five minutes and you did it for seven days, that's still 35 minutes that week that you spend time writing content. And even if you decided one day that week, you know, like maybe it's a Thursday and you randomly decided, you know what, I'm gonna go past the five minute mark today. So you go past and you get in this flow state and just keep writing and writing and writing. That just gives you so much content right there in terms of like you're actually reaching towards your long-term goal if you want to write a book. So once again, apply that to literally anything that you want. I do it with music, which is what I've been doing with recently, and it's been helping me write lyrics. And 75% of the time, I'll continue writing past the five minute mark. 25% of the time, I'll stop just because I'm so busy where I don't have time to write, but at least I did it for the five minutes. And I'm proud of myself for that. You know what I mean? I don't regret it. I don't beat myself up. So the next day I'm not like, oh man, I really should have done it. Like, nope, I did it. I did the five minutes. And it just gets you in that habit. And like I said, 75% of the time, that's pretty good because most people procrastinate anyway. So it's better than, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to write that book today. And then you never do it for a year. At least you're doing a little bit every day. (laughs) Mikey B, can't thank you enough for being on the show today. I'm glad we connected in Ohio. And I'm excited to see what the future holds for you, for Poochie Butter as a business and, um, you know, the long-term vision of, of influencing young kids for the greater good of society and helping them to live their dreams. Thanks for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, Mike, I'll go ahead and cut the interview there, man. Great job. All right. Thanks so yeah. much. Dude, this is awesome. If you wanna get it, then you gotta get it bad. I bet you really get ahead of it. You wanna be irrelevant? I'm gripping it, or ripping it. The way that I've been living, and I wonder what the benefit. I'm trying to get the best of it. Whoa, yo, look at me go. Look at the way that I'm changing my flow. Look at the way that I'm flowing so fluent. You know how I do it. I say and they do it. You ain't doing nothing, and that's what you're losing. I'm working on music. I'm starting a movement. I do it to prove it to all of my students. And if you're committed, I know you can do it. Like what? Hold up. What is the rush? Do it for love, not for the pain. Back in the day, they would say I was lame, but remember my name because I'm in the flame. Told me a teacher who killing the game, and I'm doing it better than industry lanes. And I'm finding it funny that you think. You're great. What is your grade? No, it's not eight. I don't relate. Your flow is the same, but it's so good. I'll stay in my lane. Working like 24 7, no breaks, and I promise I never would ever complain. Nah. That's real. No joke, don't laugh at the fact that I work so hard that I break my back when I rap that fast on the track. No match, I run it like a running back, but I gotta bring it back. Never win a match with that. Plenty P pack on the map for a rap, but I got no cash. I could do deal tag team that pack. 2018, I've been on my grind. Rappers to blow, I've been on that line. On the down low, I waited for nine. Perfecting my flow, still working on rhymes. Honestly, bro, I wanna get mine. Mikey B knows he's ready to shine. But if I don't, then I promise I won't get upset, cause I'm living my life and I'm feeling alive. Yeah. 
What teacher can flow like this? I promise that it ain't a diss. I'm just number one on the list. I'm the goat, don't question it. That's why all my shows are lit. I'm the man, yeah, I'm the ish. You're a joke, comic strip. Taking shots, I just don't miss. Stephen Curry, that's a swish. Then I step up to the plate, I drop a hit. You swing and miss. You strike out and throw a fit. Now you're mad and you get pissed. That's why your girl hits me up, because I am her only wish. I work harder in a day than half you kids do in a week. And there's nothing you can say, so please don't even try and speak. Putting in that overtime, getting three hours of sleep. No days off, I'm on the grind. You versus me, you can't compete. And I'm happy with my life. I'm doing something I love. That's why you know Mikey B is never going to give up. People say I have no fun, but to me, your life just sucks. You don't even like your job, and every weekend you get drunk. Yeah. So get on my level, I'm waking up early, like four in the morning. I gotta get going, cause I'm in a hurry. My time is like money, I just can't afford it to plan on my lessons. I can't make them boring. I want all my kids to have fun with their learning. I feel more deserving of the money that I'm earning when I gotta get a birdie, but I stayed up late to grind. Yeah. Do you realize I'm just a guy stuck to the vision I had in my mind? Go what I wanted, who want a surprise? You put in the time, you watch it arrive like Amazon. I'm in my prime. Don't be mistaken, I still haven't made it, but no, I'm not taking my eyes to the prize. Yeah, yeah. I know I won't blow if I don't try to find the time to write So I won't lie, I try at night, but still I can't find time And I got mic inside my mind to fight But I just might put my whole pride aside so I can kill this mic Everybody, let's go nuts Everybody, please stand up Everybody, bounce and jump I think it's time we turn up Everybody, let's go dumb And go hard like coconuts Hold on, hold on, listen up And repeat after me I promise to live my dreams I promise to live my dreams I don't care what people think I don't care what people I can achieve, achieve anything In myself I believe In myself I believe that's the lesson that I teach to my students so they see what their potential could be. I live everything I preach. I gave up too easily. So please take some notes from me. Now I got the right mindset where every day I live the dream. Yeah, live your dream. Uh, back on the scene. Like a BB, that mean MC. Not me when I mean when I feel like a fiend. Yeah, tell me who you want to be. Working on a better me. Flowing like a killer bee. Like, oh no, here we go with the flow. No joke, I'm dope. No smoke, I'm a blow like a volcano. Yeah, it's been a minute, but I gotta get a bit and put your beef in the skillet. Everybody know I kill it. Yeah, tell me who the ill is. I be rapping. Independent, but I'm feeling like I'm winning when I'm living on my vision like woo Yeah, building my brand, building my business, yeah, that is the plan But if I want to do something like start my own school, then I gotta start making some bands Yeah, yeah can you do me a favor? I just bought some brand new merch. I just got a brand new haul. You can't find it at the mall. And these shirts are super soft. You won't want to take it off. That's a plug, Logan Paul. 